destroy our Lord, our host is his name. All hail the king, all hail the king. Our redeemer is strong, our Lord, our host is his name. All hail the king, all hail the king. Our redeemer. It come a time in your life, man. And you gotta keep it real with yourself. Look around Everybody living crazy. Who you living for? Is it a hive? Or is it Satan? Tell me. Yeah. So, um, we gotta follow Christ now, y'all. He the only way to, to the Father, man. We gotta get baptized. You the chosen people of the Bible. I don't know what else I need to say to y'all, man. But uh, yeah. Everybody tryna get paid. Nobody wanna listen to the Father. Everybody tryna get laid. Everybody clubbing every weekend. Everybody tryna get played. Everybody living wicked, but everybody assuming they gonna get saved. You not doing what the father say, I, so how the heck you expect to get saved? Like an Xbox 360, I guess you people think the father is a game. Till you die, then your soul end up burning in a new flame. That true knowledge coming out So that knowledge, that's something that you people need to get in your brain Gotta read through the scriptures Gotta go and turn the page Yeah, Deuteronomy 28, 68 And told us we the slaves uh, We can get the kingdom, my people All we gotta do is obey We slaves right now, in a minute most I gonna take it away Yeah Gotta listen to the father Why you people always wanna play I'm a lion that they put up in the cage Read the scriptures, gotta turn through the page And you will start to see your own face The monster trying to wake you up He trying to call you now Everybody dying, yeah I know you hear him call Trying to wake you up. I know you hear him calling now. The most are trying to wake you up. He trying to call you now. Yeah, I just yeah. want to talk to you. I just want to keep it real. I just want to talk to you. I just want to keep it real. I just want to talk to you. I just want to keep it real. Somebody wife instead of baby mama Can we show each other love and knock out all that drama Our people were sick but you say you're Christ, see the doctor I know that the truth we kinda cut deep like a barber Please just say you clean our life out so we won't get slaughtered If you're not gonna follow Christ then why bother He was sent to us so we give us back to the Father Gotta eat that word, ain't no time for starving Gotta follow Christ and the kingdom won't be heartless Ain't gonna be no murderers, ain't gonna be no snakes, ain't gonna be no haters, ain't gonna be no fakes. The monster trying to wake you up, he trying to call you now, everybody dying, yeah, I know you hear him calling now, a higher trying to wake you up, I know you hear him calling now, the monster trying to
We at the end, man. I ain't gonna be here too long. You gotta make a decision. You either gonna get your life right, or you gonna get it wrong. Look at the people around you. Who they influenced for? Satan or higher? Think about it. Shalom, shalom. This is L.D.I.U. from One Nation, One Power. Coming back to you, brothers and sisters, one more time. Uh, I just want to once again bring forth a little wisdom for my brothers and sisters out there so that you can be in the right mindset when you begin to see things uh, getting a lot worse here real soon. Things about to heat up on the earth. You got to be able to have the right mindset and you got to be able to know and to differentiate that all of this is happening because the Most High is preparing us to go home. In spite of what everybody else out there is saying, things are about to get worse, just like it did over in the book of Exodus. When our ancestors lived in Goshen, when they lived in Goshen, things were okay. But outside of Goshen, all hell was breaking loose on the Egyptians. We are today living in modern day Babylon and the same scenario was about to happen. But those of us that are keeping these laws, statutes and commandments, once again, your house, according to the book of Ezekiel, shall be like a little sanctuary or a place of protection by the most high for you. But outside of your house, outside of the area in which you live, it shall be all hell breaking loose. Let's go into our Bibles today. Don't believe nothing I say. I'm going to show you your Bible like only I know I can. The Most High have men of God all over the earth that can break down this Bible. Hello. And they have gifts. Hello. That's why I don't run around trying to tell people that they shouldn't listen to this person or listen to that person. It's up to you to be able to pick out the bones and take the meat. Are you hearing me? When you eat a chicken or you eat some turkey, you don't eat the bone, do you? I hope you don't. <laughs> I hope you eat that chicken and take that, you know, get that meat off that bone, throw that bone away, but eat that meat, right? That's what you're supposed to be doing right now. Now, let me show you some things to where you can be in the right mindset when they begin to happen on the earth. Because there are some, the earth is about to bring forth some serious birth pains beginning this month that you got to be ready for. You got to have the right mindset. Now go with me to the book of Acts. I'm going to show you something. Open up your Bible. Go with me to the book of Acts. Go with me to the book of Acts. Go with me to the book of Acts. We want Acts chapter 7. We're going to look at a prophecy and then I'm going to show you some things. So get your pen and paper. First, I want you to write down Acts chapter 7, beginning at verse number 6. I want you to write down Acts chapter 7, beginning at verse number 6. I'm going to show you something in your Bible that, uh, like I told you before, like I only know I can. I've been given a gift by the Most High to show stuff in the Bible that most people don't even pay attention to. So get your pen, get your paper, open up your Bible, and go along with me to Acts chapter 7, beginning at verse 6. Watch this. Acts 7 and 6. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should join in a strange land, meaning a land that's not theirs. Surjoin means to live in. They're living in a land that's not theirs. And that they should bring them into bondage, slavery, and entreat them evil for 400 years. Now, we all know that August of next year is the end, makes 400 for us here in America. Now, they're going to entreat us evil for 400. That's all the way up until August of next year. Is this evil going to get worse towards us as we get closer to the end? Yes, it is. Verse 7. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage 
will I judge, says God. And after that, they shall come forth and serve me in this place. And after that, they shall come forth. We're going to come up out of here and serve the Most High where? In our place. In the Jerusalem that's still desolate. The city without walls. That's where we're going back to, brothers and sisters. But in this chapter, in these verses, the Most High said he's going to judge this nation. How is he going to judge this nation? Go with me. Go with me now to the book of Job. Job chapter 38. Go with me to Job chapter 38. How the question should be now, how does God judge nations? How did he judge the old Egyptian empire? Did, let me ask you a question. When the Most High was judging Egypt, and the Hebrews were in Goshen. Do you think that the Hebrews was crying for the Egyptians when the Most High sent all them frogs in there? No, no. Do you think that uh, when the Most High turned the water into blood in Egypt, do you think for one minute that the Hebrews that were in Goshen were crying? No, no. This is where I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to get your mind in a place where you understand that our God is about to deliver us. So there are about to be calamities on the earth that's going to take away a lot of people. Now, these people being taken away through calamity, I'm going to show you in the Bible, through calamity, you're going to have to have the same mindset and understanding that our ancestors had when they lived in Goshen. When the Most High began to send the plagues on Egypt, they weren't crying for Egypt. Hello! They weren't in National Prayer Day with Egypt. I'm going to get you in the right mindset today. I'm going to, I'm going to try to detach you from the coming judgment upon America for holding us in bondage. 400 years because they're going to pay according to Acts chapter 7 verse 6 and 7. Don't get mad at me that your Bible is telling you what's about to happen in America. And it's evident because it's already beginning. Now, go with me to Job chapter 38. Let's look at some of the weapons that is going to be used by the Most High in the day of trouble. We just wrote down Acts chapter 7, verse 6 and 7. We're going to be in a strange land. I mean, a land that's not yours. They sure spent a lot of money and time through the uh, education system to get us to put our hand over our heart, to pledge allegiance to a country that's not even ours, to get us in militaries, walking with flags. God said in Acts chapter 7, verse 6 and 7, this is not your country. This is called a strange land for you. But millions of dollars have been spent to make you think this land is our land. This land is your land. That's what they did to you. It's called brainwashing. So Acts chapter 7, verse 6 and 7. We're going to be in treated evil for 400 years. And after that, he's going to bring us forth. Go with me to Job chapter 38, beginning at verse 22. Has thou, he's asking Job a question. Has thou entered into the treasuries of the snow? Job, have you entered in into the treasuries of the snow, Job? Job, I have treasures of snow. I have so much snow. This is what the most I tell it, Job. I have so much snow, Job, that if I let loose of all this snow, I can cover the whole earth. I have treasuries of snow. This is what the Most High telling Job. Or has thou seen the treasuries of hell? Of hell? Have you seen the treasuries of the hell that I got, Job? I got big giant buildings, Job, full of hell, kept on ice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
The Most High in Exodus 15 and 3 tell all of us that he is a man of war. What he's showing, Joe, right here, is that these, this hail and this snow, he's going to break it down for us, is some of the instruments of his war. These are weapons. Snow is a weapon. Though you play in it, though you like it, though you go skiing on it, the Most High can turn what you like into a weapon. Hello. He says, I got treasuries of snow, Joe. He says, hey, oh, by the way, Joe, I got treasuries of hell. I got hell of all, all sizes, Joe. And when you get over to the book of Revelations, that hell that I'm going to send down at that time is going to be so big. Oh, you better come on up out of here. People not ready for it. We 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 looking at base. We see, we seeing the hell get bigger right now. I remember when I was a little kid, the hell was like a little tiny ball. Now the hell is getting the size of uh, uh lemons. It's headed to baseball. The hell is getting bigger and bigger. Pay attention. He said, "I got treasuries of hell." Let's look at verse twenty-three, which I have reserved against the time of trouble against the day of battle and war that I have reserved against the time of trouble against the day of battle and war I'm going to read that again against the time of trouble so he got hell and he got snow reserved against the time of trouble against the time of trouble against the time of trouble what? He got this hell and he got this snow reserved for the day of trouble. Go with me to Jeremiah 30 and 7. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Go with me to Jeremiah 30 and 7. Against the day of trouble, he got hell and he got snow that he got reserved against the day of trouble. Let's go. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. There will be no day like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. But he shall be saved out of it. So in Jeremiah 30 and 7 says it's going to be a time of trouble for Jacob on the earth. Go back to Job 38 and uh, 22 and 23. So in Job, Jeremiah 30 and 7, it talks about a time of Jacob's trouble. We want that key word, trouble, trouble, trouble. And it's going to be a day that is none like it. Let's see what's going to be some of the things that's going to make it like a day that there's none like it. Go with me to Job chapter 38 once again, back to verse 22 and 23. Has thou entered into the treasuries of the snow? Question mark. Or has thou seen the treasuries of the hell? Verse 23. Which I have reserved. Which I have reserved. Which I have reserved. I have it set aside. Why do you have it set aside, Most High? Against the time of trouble. Against the time of trouble. Against the time of trouble. Against the day of battle and war. Against the time of trouble. So in Jeremiah 30 and 7, when they come against us, which is called Jacob's trouble, in, in Job chapter 38, verse 23, the Most High said, I have this snow and this hell reserved for that time, for the day of trouble. Oh, you better come on up out of here. So what am I trying to break down to you Israelites out there is this, that you are about to see a phenomenon happening on the earth. It is not to hurt us. It is to save us. It is to deliver us. It is to get us out of America and back home. So you got to develop a mindset that when you see across the street, hell the size of hubcaps taking out your neighbor's house and everything down the block you can't be running out there screaming and hollering because that's happening because your deliverance oh you better come on up out of here you can't get uh panicky and upset when you see 12 feet of snow fall 
on a certain town because they persecuting Jacob. And then you run out there in sympathy and screaming and hollering, not realizing or understanding that all of this is about to happen because this trouble is about to happen on the earth for your deliverance. So your mindset can't be one of, oh my God, what's happening? Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God, no, you should be saying, we're getting closer to going home. We're getting closer to get out of here. It is a whole different mindset that you gotta understand, that you gotta develop in this time because the Most High is about to send miracles, signs and wonders up on the earth, but it is for our deliverance. Now, go with me to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah 29, right now you watching the volcano come alive over there in Hawaii. That's right, most high moving in the earth. Isaiah 29, Isaiah 29. Remember, he had that snow and that hell reserved for the day of trouble. The breakdown for uh, Job chapter 38, verse 22 and 23 is Jeremiah 30 and 7. The day of Jacob's trouble, a time of Jacob's trouble, such as was like, won't be nothing else like it. So you go back over to Job chapter 38, verse 22 and 23, and you get the breakdown that the Most High got snow and he got hell reserved for that day of trouble. So now we're in Isaiah chapter 29, and I want you, you to go to verse 6. Now the Most High just gave us the breakdown in Job 38, 22 and 23, where he was letting Job know that he got treasuries of hell and treasuries of snow reserved for the day of trouble, for war, and for battle. Are you guys with me so far? Now, go with me to Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 6, and let's further prove Job 38, 22, and 23. Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder, with what? Thunder, with what? Thunder, how are we going to be visited? with thunder and great earthquake. And with great earthquake, did Hawaii just get hit with a seven? The, the seven is nothing. We got nines and tens coming. So with a, with earthquake, you're gonna be visited by the Most High with thunder, with earthquake, and great noise, and great noise, and great noise. Where is this noise gonna come from? I think this noise is going to come from the sky. And great noise. And great noise. There's going to be sounds. These, can you know sounds scare the hell out of people. They're going to be visited with thunder. People are frightened. Thunder will make you jump out your pants. If it crack too close to you. And then the Most High says, you're going to be visited by me with earthquakes. And then with great noise. With storm and tempest. Storm and tempest, storm and tempest is their hell and their snow. Storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. And the flame of devouring fire. Why did he just didn't say, and the flame of fire? Because this fire right here, he said it's going to devour. It's going to eat up thousands of acres. Thousands, this kind of flame right here, Fire ain't gonna stop this. I mean, water ain't gonna stop this yet. Fire ain't gonna stop it either. You can back burn all you want. When this devouring fire hits the earth, it will do exactly what it said. It shall devour. So, we're gonna be visited by the Most High with miracles, signs, and wonders in the same manner that he did it in the old Egypt. When we was in Goshen, Everything was fine. But in Egypt, all hell was breaking loose. But the Most High also promised that he would punish us with the uncircumcised. So are there going to be Israelites also in the middle of a lot of this punishment that refuse to repent? The answer to that is yes. Are there going to be people that look like us that's going to be in the middle of a lot of this hell, snow, devouring fire, tempest, that be also wiped out? The answer to that is yes. But you gotta be in the right mindset 
to understand that all of this is happening because the Most High is preparing the earth hear me to get you home this is all in the effort to get you home he could just come down and take us home but the most high don't operate like that he like to watch his creation squirm <laughs> he like to watch you reel and squirm that's right screaming and hollering when the hell decides the basketball start falling he like to sit back and say yep i told him I told him through the mouth of my prophets. I told him. I told him what was coming. I told him that the earth is about to bring forth birth pains, but they don't believe it until they see it. Hello. So, in Isaiah 29 and 6, the Most High says that everybody on the earth is going to be visited in this manner. That's what he's saying. You, this, this is his MO. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he changes what? Not. He changes not. Now go to Psalms 77. Psalm 77. Precept must be up on precept. Line up on line. Hear a little and there a little. Hear a little and there a little. Go with me to Psalms 77 and verse 18. Right there, then. Are you ready? Psalm 77 and 18. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lighted the world. The earth trembled and shook. The earth trembled and shook. The earth trembled and shook. The earth trembled and shook the earth trembled and shook what is that a earthquake the earth trembled and shook this is psalms 77 and verse 8, 18 we are about to enter into some awesome times go with me now to the book of luke we can't leave out the new testament we want to hit a little bit there a little bit here precept upon precept Line up on line. Let's go into your book of Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Let's see if Luke agrees with Job 38, 22, and 23. Let's see if Luke also agrees with Isaiah 29 and 6. Let's see if Luke also agrees with Psalm 77 and verse what? 18. Luke chapter 21 is what we want. And we want verse 10 and 11. Luke 21, 10 and 11. Let's go. And he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation. That's happening right now. And kingdom against kingdom. That's also happening right now in the spiritual realm. Verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. I'm going to break this down for you. He said great earthquakes? Okay. If an earthquake is going to be considered great, that means it got to be bigger than the ordinary earthquake. Is anybody with me? If I want to say that was a great earthquake, that means it got to be bigger than what just happened in Hawaii. Hawaii just said 7.9. They done had 7.8s and 7.9s in other places on the earth. So this was a great earthquake. Now, in order for it to be a great earthquake, it got to be greater than an 8.0. We haven't hit this yet. This coming. What is great earthquakes in diverse places going to do to people? We can't handle an 8, a 7. I mean, we can't handle a 6.9. People panic. What's going to happen if the Most High sent a 10? That sounds like a great earthquake to me. If you ask me, hey, brother, what do you think a great earthquake is? I would say about a 10. I remember the earthquake of 72 in California. It made the ground move like the ocean. The whole uh, Compton, California was feeling like it was an ocean. The, 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 land, the water, land did that. I remember that like yesterday. 
So a great earthquake is coming. See, people are looking for regular earthquakes. No, uh-uh. Most High said he's sending some great earthquakes. Who's sending these earthquakes? The Most High. There is no such thing as Mother Nature. The, that, 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 that is a figment of, of Babylon's imagination that is made up so that you can take your eyes off who really behind the earthquakes. There is no Mother Nature. That's like the Easter Bunny. Come on up out of here. That's like Santa Claus. Come on up out of here. That's like the false Christ. And the great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And famines. And what? Famines. And what? Famines. And what? Famines. This is El you for One Nation, One Power. I'm prophesying to you. Famine is coming. Famine is next on the horizon. We starting to get hit with a little bit bigger earthquakes. They about to get bigger. So what's next? Famine. Hello. He's going to hit the earth with famine. This is part of our deliverance stuff. You got to understand this here is part of our deliverance in Acts chapter 7, verse 6 and 7. He's going to judge the nations. How he doing it? The same way he did the Egyptians. So he's going to hit them with famine and pestilences and pestilences. Everybody waiting on the great outbreak. Everybody wait on the great outbreak. The great pandemic. It's coming. This is part of our deliverance stuff. You can't see this as, oh my God, this is the end of the world for us. No. You got to see this as, uh oh, we're getting closer to going home. Every time you see a disaster, uh oh, we're getting closer to going home. This is supposed to be our mindset. The mindset of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel that's been held hostage for almost 400 years. You're a slave, Neo, and you don't even know you're a slave. But I'm going to go ahead today and help you to understand that Acts chapter 7, verse 6 and 7, told you and me we still slaves. You hearing me out there? You're not in your own land. You're not making your own clothes. You're not drinking your own water from your own well. You're not cutting up your own meat. You're not eating your own lamb. You're not eating your own goat. Hello. You buying it from somebody else in their land. And they don't even want you in their land. They, they had a chance. They want us to go back home. Tell them we going home. We going home. We going home. You can guarantee that prophecy of Acts chapter 7 verse 6 and 7. We are going home. He says, and there shall be, be great signs from the heaven. Let's read that again. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. And fearful sights. There's going to be fearful sights in the sky. And everybody out there, oh, hey, hey, ain't nothing up there in the sky. What the Bible just said? There shall be fearful what? Sights. Where at? In the heavens. In the where? In the heavens. In the where? In the heavens. We don't have the technology that the Gentiles got. We don't have the money to buy and spend money on telescopes. We too busy looking at, uh, uh, we looking down while everybody else is looking up. The Bible just told us in Luke chapter 21, verse 11, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven, from heaven, from heaven, from heaven, from heaven. This is prophecy. And people are seeing fearful sights right now in the heavens. Hello. Verse 20, verse 12. But before all these, they shall lay hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. We got a testimony coming. What's going to be our testimony when they lay hands on us and start delivering us up to the prison houses and going up before kings? That's going to be a testimony. 
what? That I am a biblical Jew from the tribe of Judah. That's my testimony. Who are you? I am a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My land is the land of Israel. Yasharah. The land that was stolen from my ancestors. That flows with milk and honey. My testimony is. I'm not black. I'm not African American. I'm not a Negro. I am a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. My testimony is that Yeshua the Christ in Revelations chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 is a black man. Hebrews 7 and 14. My testimony is that he comes from the lion of the tribe of Judah. He comes out of Judah. My testimony is in Acts 13 and 1, Paul was called niggers. Acts chapter 13 verse 1. My testimony is in Job 30 and 30 that everybody in the Bible from Genesis 1 and 1 to Revelation 22 and 21 and everything in between from Habakkuk, Joel, huh, Ezekiel, Amos, Isaiah, H uh, Malachi, every book, Zechariah, Zephaniah, you hearing me, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, my testimony is 1 Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Deuteronomy, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, everybody in there were black. My testimony is that the Bible is a history book of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. My testimony is when I go up before kings that we are the bloodline descendants of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and you got to get your mind in the right mindset because we are about to see miracles signs and wonders and yes there shall be some of our people that shall fall by the edge of the sword because they refuse to come back to the one true power to come back to the one that got the hedge of protection to come back to the one in Ezekiel 11 and 16 that promised that he would be a little sanctuary. The word, my brothers and sisters, sanctuary is a place of refuge. Let's go there. Let's go there. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Ezekiel 11 and 16. And we will finish up. Ezekiel 11 and 16. Therefore, said, I'm going to read it just like it's written. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Most High. Thus says who? The Most High. No, Don. No, the Most High. No, I yield. No, the Most High. Thus says who? The Most High. If the Most High about to talk, we need to listen. With both ears and not one ear. Although I have cast him far off among the heathen. Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, although I have discontinued them from their heritage and put them on slave ships and scattered them to the four corners of the earth, and although I have scattered them among the countries, among the countries with an S on the end, Yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries whether they shall come. A sanctuary is a place of refuge, our safety. This, my friend, is the prophecy of Goshen. Hello, yet will I be unto them a little place of safety and refuge in the countries where I have scattered them. This passage is specifically talking to every Israelite and Gentile that's keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. The Most High has made a promise from his own mouth that he will be a place of safety for us and a place of refuge in the day of battle and trouble. So, where should you be right now? In these laws, statutes, and commandments.
Hello. This is where you should be right now. What? Confessing your sins. Because if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. And that the precious blood that was shed at the cross for the nation of Israel to redeem them back to the Father. Because there was only one way to redeem us from the power of the curse was the remission and the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. So, once again, your mindset can't be the mindset of others that don't have the knowledge that we are about to be delivered out of America. The United States of America is about to lose millions of us come August of next year. How is the Most High going to do it? I can't tell you, but I bet you it's going to be spectacular. When he get done releasing this snow, when he get done hitting this earth with this hail, when he get done creating noise from the heavens, when he get done sitting down lightning bolts, when he get done hitting with the thunder, when he get done hitting this place with great earthquakes, I can guarantee you the same thing going to happen for us that happened for our ancestors in ancient Egypt. They're going to tell us to get the hell out of here. Pack your bags and go. We're going to pay for your airfare. We're going to pay for the ships of Tarshish. We want you to go. Your God is creating complete chaos on this place. You got to go. In order for him to stop hitting us with this hail and this snow, you guys got to go. This is down here from One Nation, One Pop. Have the right mindset in the day of trouble. Shallow on. Ancient of days and the elect one, I've been now 